good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you all for coming um, today afternoon. I know we're competing a little bit with your lunch, uh, so I appreciate uh, all you folks coming here. Uh, we're gonna talk about OCI's roadmap today. Um, I have with me, um, my name's Vital Shirotkar. I'm the Senior Vice President of Networking at OCI. Uh, I have with me my colleagues, uh, Donald Liu, who is the SVP of Compute Services at OCI, and Cameron Bahar, who is the SVP of Storage Services uh, at OCI. And, and three of us, we're gonna talk about the current and future um, direction of uh, the core infrastructure services um, at OCI. Um, so just some forward-looking statements. Uh, I'm gonna pause here for a moment for you to read that. Uh, just says that um, we're talking about our future plans. And also the safe harbor statement. All right, so, you know, going back a few years when we started OCI, um, back in 2016, we launched, you know, bare metal compute, virtualized compute, storage, network, and database in, um, in our first region in Phoenix. And, um, you know, since then, we've come a really long way. Uh, we've had a whole bunch of services that we've added. We've added new features to really build the entire stack that enables customers to come and run all kinds of workloads on us as well as we've distributed globally and we've built a whole bunch of regions across the globe. Um, and so this expansion on both directions uh, has enabled us to really build OCI for all kinds of workloads. Um, so we have AI and ML workloads, whether it is generative AI or it's large language models or HPC workloads. So we have these workloads running on, you know, you've heard Clay talk today morning, or you had Larry talk yesterday on the super clusters. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in, in this talk. Um, and we've got some very large uh, deployments of GPUs uh, in, in our infrastructure. Um, then we've got infrastructure heavy workloads. So we've got customers who want to run their content processing or social media applications uh, or, or um, video uh, conferencing applications, and then we've got uh, these customers running and coming to OCI for the reliable and highly performant uh, infrastructure that we have. Uh, our enterprise applications, um, they include both Oracle as well as ISV applications, um, and they span, they include things like Oracle PeopleSoft, um, they include um, things like you know VMware and SAP. We saw an example of uh, running SAP on uh, on OCI, uh, and then finally we have a private cloud offering of dedicated cloud um, dedicated regions as well as Alloy, and the combination of that is for customers who've got really sensitive workloads that are sensitive to data um, sovereignty and data residency, and for them we have our private cloud offerings. So all of these, all our infrastructure is really built on three common tenets of providing the highest security, uh, providing the best performance, and, and maximum flexibility. So, so in security, we've got products like confidential compute and encryption and key management for your storage. Then performance is achieved through things like the GPU supercluster we're gonna talk about, uh, things to uh, using things like DPU, offloading, um, and then on the flexibility side, we've got things like dynamic block volumes um, and flexible uh, compute and flexible load balancer. And all of this kind of gives you the ability to um, have your, run your infrastructure um, at the consumption that is very closely hugs your demand curve. And so that gives you your highest performance for all your workloads at the best and most predictable price in the market. <clears throat> OCI is available everywhere. We heard uh, Larry talk about uh, 64, 65 regions, and that includes dedicated regions. In this slide, we talked about our commercial regions that we have, um, and uh, we have seven more planned that's coming up very soon. Um, and if you look at some of these, um, some of these regions, we've, we've, we talk about our Azure interconnect regions. And, and uh, you might have heard Clay talk about this today morning, where uh, in 2019, we heard from customers and they wanted to run their multi-cloud workloads. And so they came to us and said, we want to have a very low latency, 
high throughput interconnect between OCI and Microsoft. And so we optimized this interconnect, set it up very close to data centers between Azure and OCI, and got, got a lot of excitement among customers, and you know, almost 500 customers started adopting this, running split workloads. And you know, some large retail customers are running the split workloads across these two clouds. We learned from that exercise, and, and um, last week, you probably um, saw Larry Ellison and Microsoft Satya Nadella launch our Oracle database in Azure. And that uses the same technology that we've used to sort of build these cloud regions to take an OCI cloud region and have that sit in Azure's data center. So it's co-located among um, Azure Compute. And a customer could go to an Azure portal and say, hey, I want an autonomous database or an Excel data database and they would get that uh, in Azure. Uh, and that almost eliminates the latency between, between the two clouds and it kind of gives a single management uh, pane for the customer. We do all this uh, thinking about sustainability. And so uh, we have taken a goal by 2025 to uh, have 100% renewable energy. Uh, and also, um, in fact, we're on our way there in Europe where 100% of our power comes from renewable sources. Um, and in the last year, 99.9% .9 of our uh, retired hardware was reused um, and recycled. Because of these, many leading brands trust OCI. We saw some of these on stage in the keynotes yesterday and today. Uh, Mosaic ML and NVIDIA uses us for our AI and ML. So NVIDIA, while being a partner, providing us with chips for, uh, for our GPUs, uh, also is using us for the very high scale um, cluster needs. We have Uber, we heard Uber yesterday, and we've got Uber and 8x8 uh, and Zoom who run the infrastructure heavy workloads. And what they do is they run their you know, mission critical, actually customer facing applications on OCI. And it's, it's really exciting to uh, you know, see customers like Uber and Zoom next time you, know, you, you sit in that Zoom call, uh, that part of that infrastructure is on OCI. Um, then you've got your enterprise workloads like FedEx and Tim, and, and um, they're, they're, they're running their mission critical enterprise workloads on OCI. And uh, you've got Nomura Research Institute and Vodafone who've got dedicated regions and really adopting Alloy uh, to have a private dedicated cloud for, for them and for their customers. Let me talk a little bit about the foundations of our cloud, which really starts in our network. Our network is built on a very hyperscale infrastructure, and at the core of it is a 400 Gbps non-blocking fabric. And when I, when, I, when I talk about a fabric, it really is the connectivity between one computer and another computer, compute with storage, or, or between services. Uh, it's all non-blocking, uh, 400 gig. Uh, we also have our large scale super clusters that allow your AI and ML workloads to run. We've got a global backbone that connect all our regions. It's a private global backbone um, and is optimized to um, have region to region connectivity uh, as well as dozens of pops that allow that. And all of this is built with a fault tolerant design and, and bringing in sort of geo diversity. At the, um, about that, you've got your virtual networking functions and services. So whether it is things like DNS um, or Fast Connect and VPN, these are services that allow you to connect your on-prem to OCI. Or you've got things like network load balancer or load balancer as a service, and these are services that allow you to accelerate your applications. And then we've got you know, network functions, like whether it is NAT or Internet Gateway or Dynamic Routing Gateway, and all these are constructs and kind of complete the overall stack. And above that, you've got your monitoring applications. Your network is you know, a place where you have packet drops and you've got faults and you need to understand what's going on. And so you've got a, you know, a vast set of monitoring applications, things like VTAP and flow logs and path analyzer that help you debug your networks and understand what's going on uh, in your network at any point. All of these are built with the core tenets that we talked about, security, uh, high performance, and providing you the maximum flexibility. When we designed our, um, over the years, we've kind of you know, evolved a network architecture. And when we started, we built an off-box virtualization device 
Uh, we used to call it the off-box uh, control computer. Uh, you might have seen from previous uh, cloud worlds. Um, we've optimized that, and we, today we run this in an accelerated DPU fleet. And by DPU, I mean data processing units. And these are really chips uh, which are optimized to run our code that we've written in-house, and these act as offload functions. Uh, so let's say I want to go and then offload a NAT function on the, on the device or encryption on, on the DPU, and it provides that acceleration. Uh, everything is built using software-defined networks, and we build our networking and security virtualization using the stack. We have a unique architecture, we call it Elastic Data Path, and um, very few people have done this. So this is, uh, this is a, um, an innovation in-house where what we do is we, it allows us to scale your network. So if your VCN has got lots of nodes and you've got a lot of source and destination that you're talking to, right? And at some point you start running out of the, the capacity of the hardware chips that you've got. And so for in, in those cases, what we do is we've got a horizontally scalable fleet of servers that keep track of your overall network, your routing state, your security rules, all of that stuff. And then they start caching that onto your DPU for acceleration. So with a combination of that and the fast path that we've built through disintermediation that enables us to provide you, you know, a, a, from your one compute to the other compute, it, you, you get the maximum performance because it eliminates hops and gives you a very predictable latency in the network. Uh, this architecture really then drives the best in class uh, for cloud performance, um, providing you the reliability and flexibility that you need. Um, Uber, we, we heard from Dara yesterday and we heard about how they're trying to grow their footprint. A lot of that is going to uh, happen in OCI's infrastructure in 2024. They very rapidly adopted OCI and they were able to just uh, migrate that within, you know, within a few months. And uh, when they, when they uh, came onto OCI, they were able to use our fast path architecture and, and the SDN-based architecture that I just talked about, and they could immediately see benefits um, in, in their infrastructure, right? They have, uh, to, to do this migration, they needed to set up five terabits per second of fast connect connectivity. And, and OCI's uh, sort of, you know, multi-AD redundant design that really enabled them um, to reduce their cost because we have no, uh, you know, inter AD uh, charges for you to transfer your data uh, and that help them reduce their overall cost. I want to now get into the super cluster uh, that we've all been talking about for the last couple of days. Um, Clay, Clay talked about sort of, you know, the, the term super cluster is, is really the combination of the uh, GPU hardware that we've got and some of the unique um, innovations we've done in our network. And so our, our RDMA network, so, so to run your AI and ML workloads, we don't have one, but we actually have two networks. And if you look at it, we've got uh, the first network, we call it the front-end network, and that's what you use for access, accessing your instances, for managing your instances, for moving access to storage, or, or talking to the internet, or talking to your on-prem, moving data into your cluster. But if you want to do a GPU to GPU communication, that happens in an RDMA cluster that is just dedicated for that communication. And then you can get inter-node communication. So per node, you could get up to 3.2 terabits per, of, uh, per, per, per second of, um, of throughput. And um, for you know, a cluster size of about 512, you could get under two microseconds of latency. And you know, if you go to up to 32K cluster size, you could get up to uh, 20 microseconds of end-to-end -end worst case latency. So everything is uh, within that. And, and how did we build this? So at the, the core of it, this is really built with uh, a Rocky V2, which is uh, RDMA over converged Ethernet. And um, we've implemented a whole bunch of algorithms on top of that. So we implemented QoS. Um, we implemented congestion control algorithms, right, that ensures that uh, the fabric is, is, is free of packet loss. Um, then we've done things like uh, intelligent placement, and we give you we give you application hints. So uh, we would give you locality hints so that you can optimize your workloads. Uh, we've got uh, flow hashing algorithms implemented that understand the workloads that are running on the supercluster and that optimize it. All of this kind of drives your performance, and we've a we've been able to see very comparable performance, even uh, you know as compared to things like InfiniBand, just using commodity Ethernet 
uh, devices. Here are some um, uh, capabilities coming soon, right? We talked a lot about uh, a, a lot of the AI stuff that's happening. Uh, but on the security side, you know, it's exciting to see we're going to turn on uh, native transparent uh, encryption, which means that you could just go to a VCN and say, I want everything encrypted. And you don't need to worry about things like I have to manage keys or any of that stuff. You just say everything should be encrypted in this VCN, and we'll take care of that and provide you with transparent encryption um, in your VCN. Uh, then we've got a whole bunch of features coming for improved scale and performance for things like the load balancer and NLB. Uh, and, and, and we've got more features like multicast support um, and, and DNS features that are coming in in our roadmap. Finally, I want to talk about uh, an example from our DRCC customer. So Vodafone, uh, you all know Vodafone is one of the largest telecommunications providers in the world. And uh, they decided to move their mission critical, and they had strong isolation requirements in the East EU uh, between the different country uh, segments. And they decided to move uh, in six DRCCs. And very rapidly, they were able to move all the infrastructure, a large portion of the infrastructure running on OCI. Um, and that was included about 410 workloads or, or different applications. Um, and they were able to achieve uh, a lot of reduction, millions of dollars of reduction in, in OPEX uh, by decommissioning their data centers that they have. Uh, so very exciting to see this use case. With that, I'm going to hand it over uh, to my colleague, Donald, to talk about compute services. Thank you, Donald. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Donald Lu. Uh, I'm a senior vice president at Iran Compute Business. So over the last couple of years, OCI has built a complete and solid platform on these three pillars, security, performance, and flexibility. In this slide, I'm going to walk you through a couple of features and capabilities leading to supporting those pillars. On the security side, I want to first talk about shielded instance. In shielded instance, what we do is that we use the trusted platform module, or TPM, to hash and verify your bootloader. When you combine that with the kernel signing feature, which all modern operating system provides, you are be sure that you will only load the code that you can trust. We use that to also power Windows Credential Guard. In confidential computing, we use AMD's SEV, or Secure Encrypted Virtualization Technology, to provide full memory encryption. With that, the customer data is not only encrypted at rest in transit, they are also encrypted in use. All Oracle hardware platforms running in OCI have root of trust enabled. So what is root of trust? Oracle designed a chip. We put it in all the hardware platform. The chip is isolated from all customers' workload. And because of that, it is secure. It is through that chip we pave all the crypto signed firmware to all the hardware components we run in the hardware platform. So this includes the SmartNIC, the ILOM, the HostNIC, and the NVMe devices. We do this to ensure that only Oracle verified firmware runs in Oracle hardware platform. We still talk a lot about off-box virtualization from a networking view. I can provide a different perspective from compute. Another way to think about why off-box virtualization is important, or why it's beneficial is to think about how is bare metal instance even possible? If you think about the old world, you run a hypervisor. It sees all the packets from the guest. It performs all the magic to implement SDN on the hypervisor. But with off-box virtualization, or you think about in bare metal instance, there's no hypervisor. So who is doing that? So what we do is put this acceleration layer, we call it SmartNIC or control computer, between the customer's workload and the Oracle's physical network. So that SmartNIC layer or control computer layer is what is implementing the SDN. And because the SmartNIC is isolated from the customer's workload, it is secure. We not only use off-box virtualization to power our bare metal instances, we also run that for VM. Let's talk about performance. We talk a lot about superclusters. We build this Rocky V2 
converge network, and we run different HPC workload in that. We put CPU-centric workload in that, which is powered by the MPI-based traditional HPC compute. For example, Red Bull Racing is running their race simulation on AMD and Ampere CPU in OCI. We also put the GPU platform into the supercluster. That supports machine learning, large language model training, and different type of AI workloads. And next, I want to talk about bare metal instance again. When we, when we start OCI with a bare metal, one major motivation is performance. We have infra-heavy customer. They want to squeeze out every bit of performance from the infrastructure. Bare metal instance combined with 30 plus years of hardware design experience from Oracle hardware team, we deliver the performance no one else can compete. We also understand the customers not only need very high computing power, they want to access to large amount of storage with high throughput and low latency. That's why we produce the locally NVN attached dense IO instance that produce microsecond level latency and with millions of IOPS of throughput. So we have top-notch security, we have uncompromised performance, but we understand it will be very frustrating to use that if we don't make it flexible. So we start our flexibility journey by not asking you to choose what computer you need from a 40-shape item list. Instead, we ask you a very simple question. How many CPUs you need and how many memory you need? And that's it. We built a computer based on that. We have customers telling us that with this flexible compute technology and with the predictable price, they're able to achieve huge cost saving in a very predictable way. And we have different level of primitives because different customers might choose different level of primitive to operate on. Some customers might want to take the beefiest machine, the bare metal machine, and just run with it. We have some other customer would rather leave the right sizing and the instance isolation work to OCI. We have some other customer, they would rather do container level or they want to run at a function level. In OCI, we provide all those choices so the customer can always find a right level primitive they operate on. So we provide different offering. It was mentioned that we are providing compute platform bringing all the major semiconductor vendors. We have CPUs from AMD, Ampere, and Intel. We have different lines of GPU from NVIDIA, from their 100 series to the 10 series. So here, I'm announcing we are bringing NVIDIA H100 Tensor Core GPU to OCI at end of this month to our customer. H100 is the most advanced GPU produced by NVIDIA today. It features the fourth generation Tensor Core. It's 80 billion transistors. It has transformer engine. It has three times improvement in the floating point processing. It introduced a new primitive of FP8 which can be used in a mixed precision tensor operation. In our design, we put eight of them in one chassis, interconnected by the fourth generation NVLink, and is supported by two Sapphire Rapid CPUs. We also put 61 terabyte of locally attached NVMe storage in the box to make sure you have enough space to store your training data, and you have enough IOPS to finish your checkpoint in time. When we put it into the RDMA network with the actual low latency and the, and the doubled internode bandwidth, we can achieve three times of GPD-3 training performance when you compare that to A100 generation before. So in the supercluster, in addition to the GPU, we also provide a suite of storage solution to support your workload. Camera will dive into block, object, and file store later. And in compute, we provide the dense IO storage, which you can use to build your storage cluster at your need. All those are supported by the RDMA over converged Ethernet. I'm also announcing here that we are bringing NVIDIA L40S Tensor Core GPU into Oracle Data Center for our customer. L40S is also powered by fourth generation Tensor Core, 
also supports transformer engine, improved uh, floating point processing power, and the new FPA primitive in the mixed precision tensor operation. We put four of them in one box, interconnected by PCIe GM5, and supported by 15 terabyte of local storage. This is also available in our supercluster to support the best performance. L4DS can achieve 70% better performance for AI training and 20% better on generative AI when you compare this to one A100 generation GPU. We have been working closely with our partners to leverage the GPU offering and the supercluster we use. Mosaic ML provides a platform for data scientists to easily develop and deploy large language models. So they have found OCI is the best foundation to scale to thousands of GPUs because of our supercluster and our linear scale in the supercluster. As quoted by Nguyen Rao, VP of Generative AI in Mosaic ML, we choose OCI for its superior price performance for AI training and inferencing at scale and look forward to use H100 and L4DS in OCI. Here I'm also announcing, starting early next year, we are bringing MPL1 CPU into OCI data center for our customer. MPL1 uh, to support our A2 instance. MPL1 double the core density, comparing to the current Archer platform. That combined with DDR5 and PCIe Gen5 is going to provide great performance is with even better economics. On the AMD side, we have providing E5 Genoa generation standard compute platform since June this year. At October, we are bringing in the Densile platform, which features 50% higher storage density and 21% higher price performance. The best way to tell OCI's security, performance, and the flexibility pillar, how they play together, is to see how our customers can move to OCI and benefit from that. A by A is an integrated cloud communication platform that has overseen two million users. They are leveraging AMD, Ampere, and Intel platform in OCI. So their initial migration to OCI only take them four days. After that, they are able to support schools, hospitals, and other institutions with the reduced cost and improved performance. This includes 25% better performance per node and 80% savings in their egress network. With that, I'm handing over to Cameron Bahar, our SVP of storage. Thank you. Yeah, maybe. There you go. Thanks, Donald. Hi, uh, glad to be here. I'm glad you're here. So I'll talk a little bit about the storage uh, aspect of, of all this in our infrastructure. And you know what's different about OCI storage compared to other clouds. Um, we take data very seriously. So our number one priority is never to lose your data. And um, we take great uh, uh, pains to make sure that your data is resilient and durable. Um, so we follow the same fundamental tenets and, and security being our, our first pillar. And so from the moment you, for example, use a block device, your data is encrypted at the source on the bare metal or on the VM using our DPU SmartNIC technology that Vithal and Donald alluded to. So every traffic in transit, whether it goes to file block or object, as soon as we get it, we encrypt it and then we you know, send it encrypted in uh, transit. When we receive it on the storage target side, it's encrypted at rest. So if we lose a rack and somebody walks out with a hard drive, there, your data is always encrypted. So there's no time in between uh, uh, where data is not encrypted. Um, we also do a lot of integration with identity management so that if you know about LDAP and Active Directory and you come from on-prem, that you can integrate with our identity management so that your security policies can be uh, enforced with uh, you know, your, um, your identity management system. So you don't have different identity management systems. Uh, we also let you bring your own keys and we integrate with key management systems. So if you don't like us to generate 
keys automatically for you. You can bring your own key when you encrypt everything with your own key. So that's pillar number one, right? Lots of security minded. And then we also do internal penetration testing and everything else to make sure our systems are resilient and you know, hacker proof. Um, in terms of performance, uh, you know, we talked a lot about you know, providing performance. So we provide the highest performance at the best possible price, right? And we offer today block storage at 300,000 IOPS. So you can actually run a production database on our block volumes at below one millisecond latency, P99, tail latency, right? That is not possible on other clouds at the price point that makes you actually lift and shift from on-prem to the, to the cloud. So you'll find that if you want high performance, you'll end up paying 10 or 20x more in public clouds to run the same on-prem workload. And that's why 70% of on-prem production workloads are not in the cloud. Oracle provides that performance for you. Um, we'll be announcing uh, NVMe over Fabric so that your block device will just go directly over an NVMe over Fabric, and that pushes us towards the one million IOPS per volume level. If you think about storage and you buy disk arrays from EMC, NetApp, and pure storage, you get 100,000 IOPS, and in the best case, you get maybe four or 500,000 IOPS. And that's a box you buy that's static. Here you have an elastic block volume attached to your compute over our fantastic network that Vital talked about. And you can get literally a million IOPS at microsecond latencies on demand in an elastic way. So that, that's, that's a high bar. There's a couple of other performance uh, announcements I'll, I'll make, but AIML, again, is pushing the boundary and breaking all kinds of systems because you need to feed the GPU beast and keep it busy because it's really expensive to buy GPUs, right? And if you can't feed it and they sit idle, then you're leaving money on the table. So we're announcing some high throughput file system, AIML uh, solutions for that. And the other uh, thing I'll be announcing is big data analytics over, uh, over object storage. And I'll talk a little bit more about that, but it, we allow you to very efficiently, very cost effectively run big data analytics workloads directly on top of object storage without worrying about storage. So lots of focus on performance, but not just a raw number, but a price that actually makes it affordable to, to move to the cloud. And flexibility is, you know, been in this journey since 2004 for me in, 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 in the cloud, maybe 2000 actually. Uh, and so the, the idea was that you pay for what you use, right? And one of the cool things I like to let you know, it's already GA, is today you, you, for storage in other clouds, you pay for what you provision. If you use it or not, you still pay. So if you want something fast, then you pay for that. You want a Ferrari, you buy a, a Ferrari, and if it's parked in the garage six out of the seven days, you're still paying for it. So we have a feature where you pay for performance, meaning you get a slider and you decide what performance you want, and the system dynamically, autonomously adjusts the performance based on what you use. So if your gap, for example, and you're in retail, and 90% of your sales are between Thanksgiving and Christmas, then maybe you want to pay for that performance during that month of the year and not have to pay for it for the other 11 months, right? And so the cloud gives you that flexibility where you can provision what you need when you need it and just pay for that. And so we have what we call dynamic performance block storage that dynamically steps up the performance to give you many IOPS, and then if you stop using it, it will automatically uh, you know, go down to low performance. Um, support for industry standards, we have a lot of, you saw a lot of, see a lot of logos, FedEx, um, Deutsche Bank, uh, NRI runs the Tokyo Stock Exchange. These people show up from on-prem and launch cloud services, so they ask us for industry standard capabilities. We can't ask them to rewrite their applications. So we go to great pains to make sure we provide all the right protocols at the right latencies, at the right performance, at the right price, so you can actually lift and shift those workloads without having to rewrite thousands of applications. At the same time, we support Zoom and Uber, which are like, I, I would say like, you know, one application specific company. 
that it's more cloud native and it's more modern. We can handle both. And for that, we provide consistent set of services. For example, if you do replication within a region or across region, across all our storage services, we have replication uh, for DR. So you can tie your DR systems into it, whether it's file, block, or object. The other thing we do that's enterprise-ish is we don't do, we don't do no eventual consistency because that's not enterprise. People do eventual consistency because it's hard to do consistent object storage, for example. OCI has never had an eventually consistent object store. It's always been consistent. So we, we architect for the enterprise, and if you write something and you read it back, it's what you just wrote, whether it's in different regions and so on. Right? Um, so what makes us do this, and you know, as we go, OCI is maybe six, seven years old, with all, right? Um, we have to keep innovating and we have to keep moving our architecture forward. And you know, one way we're doing this is by disaggregating our storage from our services into what we call storage pools. So you can have, you know, today OCI Gen 2, because it's newer, does file and block all over NVMe. There's no hard drives. We skipped a whole generation. Object storage uses hard drives for you know, efficiency and cost, right? But you know, what if QLC shows up? And what if hammer drives show up? How do we wrestle that into our infrastructure? By disaggregating and creating these pools of storage, I can add CXL persistent memory as a tier zero memory into this. And I can add SMR and tape drives at the end for deep archives. All the while keeping the applications, object block file or databases, agnostic to the underlying platform. And this is the flexibility and simplicity we bring to our own customers and our own internal customers as well as you. Which means, you know, if you show up and you need an object store that's backed by SSDs, then you just set a policy, you declare your intent, and we automatically do that for you. You know, like the tiering is also what this unlocks, right? So, you know, if you want to do tiering between file and object, today you have to copy the file out, go out through the front door, come back in through a web server, and do a put on an object store, a completely different system. All you're doing is moving bits from SSD to hard drives. So it's almost like if you want to borrow, like, I don't know, ketchup from your neighbor, it's easier if you just have a side door and borrow the ketchup and give it back to him, as opposed to go out the front door, run to his dog, security, you know, and like come back through the other side, get authenticated, ring the bell. Right? It's extremely efficient. So when people ask, sometimes I show prices, and how do you do this 10 times cheaper? They think we have a decimal point off in our presentations on the pricing. And I say, actually, it's 10 times cheaper because it's more efficient. I don't have to go around and make 18 copies of stuff. I can just move bits on the wire. So that gives me efficiencies. And as Vithal mentioned, everything is being DPU enabled. So we can offload NVMe protocols, compression, encryption, and all these services off box into, into DPUs. Um, announcing uh, OCI high performance uh, file storage. So typically when people use file, we, we basically do quality of service and we aggregate our software on, on bare metal servers. And on a typical NFS file access, you would get 0.4 gigabits per second. Well, we have a lot of AIML customers, and they want 40 gigabits per second, 100 times more. So all we do is tune our software and launch this feature. It's not new software. It's the same software. We just never had anybody ask 40 gig bandwidth to a single GPU host. Who does that, right? All the AIML customers do that. So all the nodes that uh, Donald mentioned about H100, A100, they want 40 gig per second per node. So we turn that on, that's being uh, GA'd, and you could get simply an NFS mount target. Now the beauty of this is it's a managed service. It's, uh, you don't have to manage any storage, you just click and get a file system and we do everything for you. And uh, it's got a global namespace, it's got snapshots, it's got multi-region replication. It's not a point solution just for, for this use case, it's a general purpose. So that's one example of having the right architecture where we can simply turn a dial and give you 100x more performance. So that gets to 40. And then a few months later, we'll dial it again and give you 80. 
and that should be okay for the short term. But as uh, our wonderful folks from PM, they want 400. So, you know, 80 is not good enough. Like, so as we go, we have to keep innovating and improving performance. Um, this one is GA, OCI High Performance Analytics on Object Storage. So we have several customers who've come to us and said, you know, I've got a thousand node Hadoop cluster on-prem. It's got local disk drives. I'm running HDFS and I'm running Hadoop and Flink and, and a bunch of other tools. And, you know, I want to come to your cloud on one condition. I can run this whole thing on an object store and almost pay nothing for storage and, and don't do any storage management because I don't want to have a thousand node cluster sitting around paying for compute. As Donald said, it's flexible and elastic. I'd like to just use N nodes when I want it and elastically expand my compute up and down to do my analytics and do everything on object storage. But we took over this HDFS connector and that software and we improved performance on various sort of lines by 30, 50, or 100x. So our team really worked hard, hard on that to change the fixed impedance mismatch between object storage and these high performance workloads. So our object storage is designed to be high performance and go towards big data, AI, ML, and, and GPU workloads by giving you lots of bandwidth. And if you look at the heat wave announcement that was all the rage by Edward today, guess what? It, it's enabled by object storage. And we worked with them over the last few years to make object storage fast enough so you could literally be 20 times faster than Snowflake by loading from our object storage. So that's, those, are, th those are some of the nice things that um, we, we're doing that's in production. Um, some of the customers, uh, this is a nice one. I, 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 I play soccer, so Premier League you know, uses our platform. We talked a lot about our platform. They put all their data in an object store. They use, uh, the, they pull the data into, an, uh, into the data warehouse. Then they use our analytics cloud to do the analysis. And they do all this to figure out, like, who's the top goal scorer. And they actually measure how, when you kick the ball to the net, how fast did it get to the net. And all this stuff is uh, used so that you can do, uh, uh, analytics and give prizes to at the end of the you know year to people. They analyze billions of data points, but the real data is you know who do you dr trade, who do you draft, who do you who do you bring to your team to win. It gives you that insight so that they they know what are the upcoming players and and so on. So that's that's sort of a old school business that that leverages our platform. Uh, another example I like to use is Luma AI that brings together all our three talks. These guys do AI ML, generative AI, right? Use our GPUs, use our RDMA cluster network, and then use our high performance mount targets in our file system to literally have an end-to-end -end use case for a generative AI. So, you know, when, when companies like this show up, they do 3D modeling, they inject these generative AI models into videos, and so they blur the line between you know, a real video and, and, and then generated video within a video and characters within videos embedded. It's a lot of processing, a lot of storage to keep the GPUs busy over an RDMA fast cluster network. And this kind of showcases what we've been talking about is how do these things come together, play together holistically as a platform to give you that value. So, you know, in, in essence, we talk about security. We take that very seriously. Uh, governments, uh, you know, use our cloud. They, they, we have uh, secure clouds. So, you know, we go through all the security semantics. High performance, we talked about. And high performance is not just compute network and storage. The system has to be balanced between all three. So we work very closely to balance that performance across uh, and have no choke points, so to speak, and, and give you that flexibility. You know, Charles Darwin is my favorite quote. It said... Um, what did you say? You said it's not the strongest nor the most intelligent member of the species that survives. It's the one most adaptable to change. I've used that through my life and, and also here, which is, you know, just being strong and smart is not good for survival, right? Flexibility is what. And so we want to provide flexibility. And when we do that, customers reciprocate, enjoy, and, and, and win. We, we win together. So to, to summarize, We've got non-blocking network fabric. 
lots of improvements in, in security through application firewalls, transparent you know, native encryption in the network that's coming that we all talked about to our high, or high, high performance RDMA cluster networking. Pair that up with you know, a cluster of compute uh, nodes that you know, are multi-vendor, uh, AMD, Ampere, Intel, GPUs from NVIDIA, and hopefully others uh, as, as they come. And, and tied that with high performance, elastic, flexible storage with enterprise features at cloud scale. Right? And the combination of these things is, I think, what helps us win when people try OCI and also uh, bring innovation to, uh, you know, to our customers. Um, that's the end of my talk. Thank you very much. I appreciate you coming. And there's a session survey. If you want to use that QR code and give us feedback, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks. Hey, did you like what you learned? Make sure to check out this video or this link, and of course, subscribe now.